because very little was known about how sleep worked, hmm. a lot of experts thought it wasn't really necessary or people slept too much. Uh, you know, really, you could, if you tried hard enough, if you were disciplined enough, they thought you could minimize it. Famous industrialists would brag that they could get by with four hours of sleep uh, and right. everyone else should too. Uh, so it really took this scientific investigation to mm -hmm. win respect for sleep and, and, and help people understand how incredibly necessary it is. But even then, we boast about it today as well, right? That there are people who say, hey, I get by, I just need four hours of sleep. I just need five hours, I'll get by. The superstars, actors, industrialists that you said, that's not a good thing to brag about in hindsight then, because it's not helping anybody beyond a point, or at least that person who's talking about it. Is that correct? Uh, it is correct. And, you know, some people are genetically programmed to need less, but it's a uh, quite a tiny uh, sliver of the population. Right. Some people need much more. Some people need 10 to 12 hours. Uh, uh, however, it's not the case that the more the more sleep you get, the healthier you are either, because hmm. beyond eight or nine hours, people actually tend to be less healthy. We don't know if that's because they're sleeping too much or they're sleeping mm. too much because they have health problems. But statistically speaking, uh, seven to nine is is pretty yeah. much the, 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 the sweet spot. In terms of the modern uh, life of an individual, which is infested with smartphones and you know you you want to check your email or social media before you go to bed that's become the new norm and more so in the last 5 7 years than ever before how does that impact uh, just before hitting the bed uh, when you are looking at that screen and then you go to bed is that a good thing or a bad thing or not relevant at all i can say it's not an ideal thing. Uh, there is some debate over the effect of, of looking at our smartphones and our tablets at night. Um, one theory is that they emit blue light. Uh, and uh, blue light is what, uh, in normal circumstances in nature, you would see in the morning. And so mm. when you're looking at a screen that's beaming blue light into your eyes, it's going to that brain center called the suprachiasmatic nucleus and telling it, hey, it's morning, wake up. So that can cause, that can disrupt your sleep. Another thing about looking at your screens simply is that they're emotionally and mentally stimulating. Uh, and if you're on social media, you might be having your feelings of anxiety, envy. That's not particularly good for you either. So um most experts at this point uh, advise people to try to get off of your screens a couple of hours before you go to bed. Uh, the science is not conclusive, but it seems like a smart idea. Yeah, those thought patterns that you talk about, right? You don't want anything uh, to interfere with your sleep. Uh, and you have an amusing little uh, story in your book where Albert Einstein volunteers to get himself uh, tested in the night and then he goes into deep, deep sleep and then suddenly wakes up and calls for a telephone, doesn't he? Where he says he's got some correction in some paper that he's written to his colleagues to, and the, on the other side of the country. So that that comes in the way. So you, you want to have a sound sleep, you may as well keep everything uh, away then. It's true, although that Einstein story also illustrates another thing. We don't know what Einstein was doing right before he went to bed uh, at that point and why he woke up in the middle of the night. Uh, but I myself have experienced this, and I think many other people have, of waking up in the middle of the night, you've been working on a problem. For example, oh. when I was writing this book, I would mm. be writing a chapter, I'd get to a point, how do I, how do I go forward in this? I don't know what I'm yeah. doing, you know? Where am I going? Go to sleep, wake up in the middle of the night, I've got it. And I would go to, a, I kept a little pad of paper by my bed and yeah. I would write down the solution and I'd wake up in the morning and think, my God, that was brilliant. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I would wake up in the, I wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night, but I'd wake up in the morning having gone to bed with an insoluble problem. And mm. in the morning, my brain would go, hey, here's the solution. So one yeah. thing that's happening uh, in your brain during the night is it isn't continuing to solve your daytime problems. And mm. that is another reason why sleep is so important because memories are getting consolidated. Uh, things are being worked out on the subconscious level that you have no idea. Uh, mm. And the person who really found out about the, or who really spearheaded uh, the idea of sleep as a public health issue, not just an issue between you and your doctor, you and your mm. spouse, uh, 
was a guy named William Dement. What really awakened him and other scientists to this was in 1986 when the space shuttle Challenger exploded mm -hmm. uh, and a, an investigative commission uh, discovered that one of the reasons the accident happened was because the launch engineers at NASA had been sleep deprived for two consecutive nights and mm -hmm. they, their decision-making process was deeply impaired. That led to a bunch of studies showing, yes, that car crashes increase at certain mm -hmm. hours when people are sleep deprived, that industrial accidents are more likely to occur when people are sleep deprived, including the Chernobyl and Three Mile Island meltdowns, the Exxon Valdez uh, oil yeah. spill, uh, all were sleep deprivation was involved in all of those things. And so one of the important things, my takeaways from this book was that Sleep is not just a personal problem, but it's a problem in society causing mm. uh, excess car crashes, excess industrial disasters, all sorts of man-made disasters are actually affected by lack of sleep. Right. You write about another construction worker, don't you, where he would fall asleep on the scaffolding while you know doing his bit because he suffered from obstructive uh, sleep apnea where you you can't, you, you wake up in the night because you're not breathing enough uh, so this is a real and present problem. And and uh, uh, William Dement, uh, uh, you just talked about, he also, uh, what, would he be the first person to have popularized sleep science because he was called on to the Johnny Carlson show? So I will ask you the same question that Johnny Carlson asked uh, Mr. Dement back in the day. Why do people need to sleep? <laughs> what, what answer and do we have today, which is any different from 1974? Uh, I think Dement's answer to Carson was exactly right, which was we sleep to avoid being sleepy. Uh, <laughs> and and that, you know, that got a laugh from the audience because it seems sort of silly. Uh, yeah. But in fact, no one knows why evolution programmed us to sleep in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's it's, it's it's possible that it was to conserve energy so we wouldn't need as much food. Uh, it's possible some scientists have theorized that, well, uh, it was a way to force animals to hide from their predators at the hour yeah. when they would be most vulnerable, uh, to keep them from, from uh, falling off of cliffs in the middle of the night when they couldn't see, uh, yeah. or, or a time when our brains are, are doing offline maintenance. All of these things uh, you know, have something to say for them, but nobody knows what the real reason is. But what mm. we do know is we don't get enough sleep we are sleepy. And when we're sleepy, we really don't perform well. Uh, yeah. And our bodies also don't perform well. Uh, and so the importance of sleep is to avoid sleepiness. Uh, yes, I think even birds, the, those who are on migratory, the migratory birds, even they catch a wink while in the air for a few seconds. And that's their a uh, bit of rest or uh, whatever the reason is. If they don't do that, they might be uh, a little too sleepy for their own uh, comfort. What are your hacks, uh, uh, Kenneth, in terms of getting yourself to bed? What have you learned over the years? You're a journalist. Uh, you will have these deadlines which at odd hours. So how do you manage that? And are there any tips for those wanting to apply uh, to sleep well? And so the first thing is to just decide, I really need to work on this. This is important to my life. What can I do to to make things better? Mm. Um, I started for myself, you know, just trying to to pull fewer all nighters and and uh, and make sure I got to bed by a certain time. Uh, but there are other things that you can do. Scientists say that you know preventing sleep problems is really the 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 best cure. Uh, and ways to prevent them involve, helping your circadian systems stay aligned with each other. And so probably the first key thing that, that all the experts say is you should try to keep regular hours if you possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know you're, you're, uh, that clock in your brain uh, uses things like daylight to, to know what time it is. And yeah. if you keep uh, irregular habits, you're going to make it confused. Another thing that uh, uh, a lot of experts say is that exercise makes a big difference, um, regular exercise. It's not that if you have a hard workout one day, that night you're going to have a great sleep, but it's mm. developing regular exercise habits seems to help people sleep better. Um, another thing is that your bed should be really only for sleeping 
uh, and a few related uh, things like, you know, sex and and maybe some light reading that calms you down. Mm -hmm. But things like watching television in bed, doing work in bed, eating in bed, mm -hmm. uh, are psychologically confusing. Your 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 right. brain has a way of making associations with things, and mm -hmm. if it associates your bed with sleeping, you're in good shape. If it associates mm -hmm. your bed with working and being stimulated by television or your or your smartphone, not such a good thing. So sure. that's a thing to avoid. Other things involve. Uh, caffeinated beverages, uh, you don't want to have them beyond sometime in the probably mid to late afternoon, right. depending on your sensitivity. Napping, a lot of people nap, but if you're going to nap, uh, it's best to nap before late afternoon, earlier in the day, and to keep it to maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Mm. If you nap for too long, it, it uh, sort of deflates your sleep pressure in the at night when right. you want to be asleep and it's harder right. to fall asleep and that can get you in a, in a vicious circle. 